slides shortly. Thank you. So whilst I wait um, for the slides to come, here we are. Um, just to say, I've been to India a couple of times this year, including to the India Lines. That was the, the prime reason for the, for the visit. So it's very good for me now that I can speak from a perspective of having seen the offices and having seen the amount of work that is happening there. So um, this is a very important part of it, it's the, the research management initiative. I'll give you just a brief background on, on the um, set up in terms of the, the welcome perspective on this and our partnership with the Department of Biotechnology. Um, if you could move to the next slide, please. So the India Alliance is an initiative that is currently in its second phase, um, and it's a partnership with the Department of Biotechnology. Um, the funding ratio in the second phase is um, a two to one ratio. In the first phase, it was 50-50. And for Welcome, it represents a model of funding, what we call funder funder. And the primary aim for this model is to what we call shift the center of gravity. So that really is to move leadership of funding, priority setting, management of um, or health research capacity in India. There's some background noise. I don't know who's got their microphones on, but if you could turn it off, that would be helpful. Thank you. So it's a different model. Um, and we have another initiative, um, which used to be called the African Academy of Sciences AISA platform um, that has ended, but shifted to an organization I call the Science for Africa Foundation, which is a similar model, so fund the funder. So where the responsibility of the work is on the continent rather than out of the offices and headquarters in London um, and wherever else. I've stolen this figure from the India Alliance annual report, and you can see what impact um, the India Alliance has had. It speaks for itself. I don't need to say anything more on that. Moving to the next slide, please. Just a little bit of background on Welcome. So Welcome is the largest UK provider of non-governmental funding for scientific research. But we work very closely, obviously, with other organizations such as um, the India government in this particular case, the, the Department of Biotechnology. And um, Welcome's latest strategy was launched at the end of 2020, um, and it's outlined here in this graph. Um, so it, it mainly um, supports discovery and research, um, but also has what we call challenge areas in mental health, infectious disease and climate health. And those areas fund research that go all the way through from discovery research to the more translational and applied end. If you could move to the next, please. The other thing that was flagged and emphasized through the strategy, um, so this slide says the same of what the previous slide says, but I wanted to highlight it because um, the other aspect of our strategy is that uh, there is now a very distinct focus on diversity, inclusion and research culture. And that includes, obviously, things like research management, um, flourishing ecosystems in um, science research. So it's a very important part to us. This has grown out in part um, of previous work that has been engaged with. Next slide, please. namely a priority area which was called Research Ecosystems in Africa and Asia. And some of you may remember Annie Rollington and Simon Kay, um, my predecessor, and um, Annie Rollington is still at well, who've really driven this area. And this work has now moved from being a priority area well, to business as usual. There were three areas that were the focus of this priority area, which ran for, for just under five years. And that was around coalition and partnerships. It was around uh, research leadership. And then importantly for this conference, research management. So that is around practices um, in Africa and India um, and underpinning greater research and development productivity. I'll go into a little bit more detail in the next slide, which shows you the aspect of the work that was done in terms of research management. And you can see here that that had a lot of different components to the work that was done at Welcome and in partnership with a number of institutions, including the India Alliance. So we worked around scoping um, or did a report on, on 
research management, both in, in Sub-Saharan Africa and South Asia. There were initiatives such as REMPRO, which I'm sure many of you will be familiar with, but also the, the India Research Management Initiative. Um, there were a number of findings and outcomes from this. Next slide, please. Um, and I've just highlighted a few here. So key messages that um, were taken from this work were that um, strong research environments support greater productivity, the actual research, innovation and um, funder confidence. So all round positive for the, from the perspective of both the researcher and the funder and then um, wider research and development ecosystem. Also, um, one of the key findings was that strong governance in terms of operations, management, um, underpins the investment um, that funders make in low middle income country institutions. And therefore that can grow and then bring on board funding from um, internal organisations as well. So um, the three figures that you can see here are reports um, or knock on reports, so to speak, that stemmed in part out of the work that was done through the research ecosystems in Africa and Asia work. Um, so there was a report on um, research management in Elmix um, with a focus of India and a parallel one in Africa. There's the work by the WHO TDR Essence for Health Research Group on research costings. Um, and then there's the very recent report from UK CDR and the Essence Group on re equitable research partnerships. So I encourage you to look at these reports and to use them in your daily practice because they've got quite good hands-on comments um, and tips of the trade, so to speak. Moving to the next slide, please. But the focus of this meeting is the Re India Research Management Initiative. And again, I've stolen this figure or this um, image from the India website. And it just gives you an idea, and you will know more than I do about this in, in some ways, of the broad spectrum of work that um, India Alliance um, is engaged with in terms of management grants, in terms of travel grants and fellowships, etc. So I really wish you a very fruitful com um, conference over the coming days. Next slide, please. And I also speak for my colleague, Sherry Adigan, who is um, also a trust for the India Alliance. On the left here, you can see when we visited the India Alliance um, earlier in the year. And I believe I'm handing over to my colleague from DBT, Al Kashama, um, who will give you um, some further input from that side. So enjoy the conference, um, have fun, make use of it, and um, let it be a fruitful um, event that helps you with the work that you're all doing. Thank you so much, Dr. Hennig. That's That was really, really a very wonderful introduction to the AMI conference. And I now invite Dr. Alka Sharma, Senior Advisor from the DBT, who is also a trustee for the DBT Welcome Trust, India Alliance. Over to you, Dr. Sharma. Thanks, Savita. Thank you very much. So good afternoon, everyone. It is my pleasure to be a part of annual conference on India Research Management Initiative, IDMI. You just heard Brahman, and she actually has provided a nice overview on welcome, to, uh, welcome perspective and also partnership with India Alliance. So as you know, the biomedical research career program, which is being administered effectively through special purpose vehicle, um, that is DBT Welcome Trust India Alliance, uh, is the key partnership between DBT and Welcome Trust for nurturing high quality biomedical researchers across the scientific career for early, intermediate and senior fellowship. So India Alliance was officially launched in September 2008. And since then, this organization is focusing on building strong, world-class biomedical research, human resource in India at a scale where the country can make a global impact in science and technology, especially in biotech sector. So if you really see the growth of global biotech industry, which has grown by more than 5% in the last few years, where India contributes 3% market share, and we are ranked 12th in global um, uh, biotech sector and 3rd in Asia Pacific, and we are the largest vaccine manufacturer. We has crossed 80 billion US dollar in 2021. 
and as per the global innovation index 2022 there is a huge jump in the rank of india from 81 in 2015 to 40 in 2022 having laid the solid foundation for enabling cutting edge biotech science the goal is now to transform into knowledge and innovation driven bioeconomy with a target of achieving 150 billion us dollar by 2025 and over 300 billion us dollar by 2030 to achieve this there is a need to focus on building human cities who can take lead in frontier science creating infrastructure for emerging technologies promoting translation product development and commercialization ecosystem strengthening basic and translation research to have a robust pipeline for new technologies so creating a pool of research management personnel and empowering them is the need of the hour for successful implementation of cutting edge nationally relevant and internationally impactful science report so the government is making continuous effort and uh, acting as a facilitator for laying a strategy creating ecosystem to facilitate end to end processes developing critical mass of desired skills and also addressing regulatory issues from time to time so a number of regulatory reforms which i like to highlight here have been undertaken in the past few years so just to name a few uh, many of you are aware that new drugs and clinical trial rules have been notified in march 2019 and this includes reduction in timelines for approvals depending on the nature of clinical trials reforms also cover details regarding post drug access clinical trial approval application of part to the independent ethics committee i would also like to mention here the medical devices rules are operational from 2018 onwards to regulate the medical device sector and in this medical devices are classified as per global standards and are regulated based on the risk based classification and the policy national medical device policy 2022 is also under consideration by the government and the main features of the policy include leveraging state of the art technology setting up high quality common infrastructure and nabl accredited laboratories reduce import dependency and Home code of medical device marketing practices. Very recently, DBT issued standard operating procedures for regulatory review of genome editing plants under SGN1 and SGN2 categories to provide regulatory roadmap, requirements for research and development, and meet the threshold for exemption of genome editing edited plants under SD1 and SD2 categories. So, as we all experienced in the last two years, were very challenging due to pandemic. and our government took several measures to make india self reliant to face the challenges so fast track mechanism were devised for supporting research over and augmentation of manufacturing facilities and efficient deployment in the current scenario it is very very important to ensure that we make ourselves ready for future challenges and amalgamation of knowledge skill and technology is a major challenge and this needs to be addressed appropriately our scientists clinicians and startups must be prepared to lead innovation and focus on out of the box solutions through interdisciplinary cutting edge team based research so there is now this is very important to focus on build, building a vibrant agile and integrated bio ecosystem and it is also important to build a natural partnership both within the nation and also across the nations so today's event is very very um, uh, appropriate in the this contest and, and this will provide a suitable platform for bringing together key stakeholders and experts to deliberate upon global trends in science and technology opportunities for india and also chart the future trajectory of india's bioeconomy so all the very best and have a successful event thank you very much Thank you so much, Dr. Sharma. It's true there are some amazing opportunities for research and innovation coming up in India, and I'm sure our research managers, innovation managers, are going to play an important role in supporting those activities. And as we also heard from Dr. Hennig, uh, research management is not restricted to any one country. Uh, there are organized efforts actually all over the world to support research, which is a global endeavor. Um, so. if the future is bright i think for india's research managers as well thank you very much both of you for your introductory comments 
And on that note, it's a pleasure to invite Dr. Rajesh Gokhale, the Secretary to the Department of Biotechnology. We're very fortunate to have Dr. Gokhale here with us uh, as well. Over to you, Dr. Gokhale. Thank you very much. Uh, can you hear me from the from the spot? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yes. Yes. Uh, good afternoon to all of you, and it's my pleasure to be there in the Hyderabad office of India Alliance, actually, with all the wonderful people around here. And uh, I, I, I was just happened to be traveling on 31st to Hyderabad, so I thought I may as well visit and uh, talk to all of you from this conference. I'm just trying to upload a small presentation. I thought it's just important to put together some. Of it. Ah, yeah. I can, I can share it. So I think the, uh, you know, my perspective about how science managers function has changed over the last three decades. And I can tell you that from my own understanding of what I have, little understanding that I have acquired over a period of time. Earliest of, uh, you know, when, when I just started my career, in fact, one of my major uh, interactions used to be with the Welcome Trust, uh, as a senior research fellow, my interaction with the Welcome Trust people in London. And I thought it was very, very important for me to learn a variety of important activities that we could do together and solve that we were not able to do at the time uh, as an independent scientist to be able to carry out these activities. So therefore, I've called this uh, talk, title of my talk is Making Success, actually. And the whole idea really is that, is that as a funder, what we always believe and what we want to do is to make successful investment such that it makes larger impact to not just society, not just individual, but to the society and the larger community as well as we continue to work in this area. Can I have the next slide, please? Increasingly, what has now happened is that research is no longer an individual driven program activity only, actually. It's become very complex. Many programs and major activities are collaborative projects. These are consortia based, they're multidisciplinary and they're globally funded actually. And therefore the role of people who manage these programs and in fact manage and administer become even more complex and even more important because the integration of these pieces together only makes you an impactful science. That is what one is required to do today. Actually. Can I have the next slide, please? So one of the one of the aspects of this. The scientific research managers and administrators in a conventional thought process always was that it is about this is about accounting, it is about project management, and is about probably at max making some policy changes that really makes this an important activity. I think what I've learned now over a period of time, and I think that has become incredibly important. Can I have next slide? Up? Next slide, please. Is that it is now all about you know learning other aspects of the things that are incredibly important and as uh, Brennan also indicated in our talk actually it's about open science, it's equity and diversity, understanding the ethics, having public engagement, having advocacy of responsible research and also then having active scholarship to attain the set out aims as well actually. You also need to have a detailed scientific understanding such that the aims and guidelines can be understood, which can then be systematically removed and carried out uh, in, in the future framework of scientific excellence. Let's just give you an example what I mean by it. Can you go to the next slide, please? Now, this is an example of what I call minarets of support, actually. And if you really look at, this is a picture of Taj Mahal that I've cropped, actually. And you can see what is missing from this picture of Taj Mahal is what is very, very incredibly important for what gives this mausoleum it's real benefit, which is, uh, can you go to the next slide? Which is are these four minarets actually. And if you, if you remove these four minarets, the whole Taj Mahal looks like an empty shell, which has no real value for look at that. And I think this is, of, this is important to understand of what this really means in terms of this. I mean, in fact, the Taj Mahal was first made as a discrete mausoleum entity. And these minarets were the first impression of uh, gives it an impression of elevation, gives it an impression of light, and gives it an impression of how larger success models can provide. In fact, in India, this was the first time when, you know, 
minarets were introduced in the country in fact all the earlier architecture that you see which were prior to taj mahal was independent of this and therefore what i am calling this is that the pillars of success requires all these minarets to be consolidated around a mausoleum to be able to convert it into a paradigm of important activity and i think increasingly this is becoming a very very important paradigm shift that we all need to understand and learn to work together of how research policies and research structures can in fact be together enabled in a way that is done by the research managers can i have next slide please i think therefore i would just summarize and say it's an essential part of healthy research culture it makes the search happier and productive which is what real idea is the projects that will run well often you will see that healthy research relationship between researcher and research manager actually so it's not that cause and effect only you can see that when both things come together they work well and it also allows you to do good good practices and establish what i call professional standards just so very critical for a future perspective of indian science so i think i'll just stop here this four five slides i just want to put my perspective on it and say thank you for having me over here it's in my new avatar that i'm learning how research funding can in fact enable and change strategically not just you know in this case india alliance but the governance of the country and in fact probably the bioeconomy of the future of our country of how this will govern and change the course of the nation's progress so small funding bodies can change the progress of the people and department of biotechnology is hoping to change the nation's progress so thank you all for having me here and uh, good luck to all of you for all wonderful things that you are doing thank you very much Namaskar. thank you so much thank you so much dr gofle for a very energizing talk i think that's again set the conference off to a great start and you mentioned consortia and complex science and in actual fact through the conference this year we have several talks which are focused on this kinds of complex science and what research managers can do to enable that so we look forward to those kinds of narratives as well so it's most timely thank you so much and on that note i now it's a, it's my pleasure to invite dr mitra the ceo of the dbt welcome trust india alliance dr mitra uh, request you to please share your thoughts on ermi and research management for all our attendees thank you savita uh, so uh, welcome to you all for this second uh, annual conference of indian research management initiative i am very glad that uh, you know we are able to conduct it and uh, i should thank savita and the entire team uh, for able to put together such a program i have gone through the program and it uh, shows that uh, you know how this area has grown uh, even uh, 10 15 years ago uh, when i started uh, you know uh, my journey into administration or uh, this world research management was not there uh, so we created a academics office a project management office and i was also running a dbt uh, jra program so three things i was doing together uh, but the the term research management was not there and uh, there were many things which we were probably not doing properly but now uh, you know in recent years the initiative taken by india alliance is actually allowing uh, you know people to gain uh, not only be trained but experience uh, how to go about it uh, how research management should be done uh, i am very glad that india alliance have been able to support through fellowships grants uh, programs uh, this initiative i think uh, india alliance is the first uh, you know agency in the country to support this kind of initiative in the country and because of that many organizations which did not have any uh, you know research management uh manpower or office are slowly having you know people uh, they are uh, getting people they are hiring people and uh, 
most of the organizations slowly are going to have like office of sponsored research and grants which used to be very common in every institutions in west right so this is something uh, which is probably uh, a, a gift of india alliance to the country uh, science uh, management so uh, and as i said i have looked at the program the program uh, you know comprises of Uh, looking at many many different uh, perspectives the way to uh, <clears throat> do uh, research management and uh, this uh, four day program put together by savita and his team uh, appears great to me and uh, i really hope uh, you know it brings in more people uh, into this area and uh, you know we have more uh, research managers in future I wish this uh, conference a great success. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, Dr. Mitra. And I think it's it's uh, an apt demonstration of the role of ERMI in uh, facilitating the creation of new research offices. If we look at the kinds of institutions who are participating in the conference this year, there's definitely an expansion compared to where we were last year for the first edition of the ERMI conference. so it's it's wonderful to see participation from universities from ngos a lot of different kinds of institutions so on that note uh, i'd like to thank all of our panelists for the inaugural session once again thank you so much for joining us and encouraging us with this initiative